Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I'm sorry I missed last week. I didn't have one episode last week. It was just crazy at the store. We did a beer reset. That's always a big deal. It just consumed my time, and we're in growing season. I have about a, over an acre of grass that I have to keep up. So, you know, I'm, you know, like my, what? My football coach in high, in high school, or in junior high actually, said, excuses are like belly buttons, everyone has one. And I know I'm making excuses, but I am going to strive to keep on my schedule of loading episodes Monday and Thursday. Sorry about last week, but I'm going to keep on doing it. So, there you go. We are going to look at Chenin Blanc from Vouvray in the Loire Valley of France. Chenin Blanc is a really cool wine. Uh, they used to do a ton of it in Washington State. Now they've kind of dwindled down to just a few wineries that do Chenin Blanc. Uh, but it, it is very famous. In, in fact, Vouvray, the town of Vouvray, this is what the appellation is named after. And it's in uh, near the uh, Touraine region of uh, the Loire Valley. One of the most famous appellations in the Loire Valley. And, and they're very highly respected there. And their focus is Chenin Blanc. And um, the, the cool thing about the Loire Valley and Vouvray, there's eight villages around there, but the cool thing about it is the soil, which really defines the Chenin Blanc there, and it's Tufu, which is a porous limestone soil that really gives Chenin Blanc its characteristics. It's also very good for drainage and for water retention. So I know a lot of wine geeks get really excited about wine grown on limestone soil and this is called tufu and it's spelled t-u-f-f-e-a-u -F -F -E but it's pronounced tufu and that is the soil composition where chenin blanc is grown now one of the problems with chenin blanc especially for a newbie in the wine world is they don't have strict regulations about the dryness or sweetness level of these wines now one of these we're doing today actually says demi-sec on it, right over here, and we'll talk about that a little. That's a sweeter style Chenin Blanc. Then if it's from the town of Muelu, or the region of Muelu, if it says Muelu on the label, it's going to be sweet. And that Muelu is spelled is spelled M-O-E-L-L-E-U-X, Muelu. So if you see that on the label, it's going to be sweet. Hopefully, whatever wine shop you go to, the guy or girl there that runs the shop knows whether it's sweet or not. That's the key, because most times, they do not have a sweetness or dryness indication on them. So, you know, of course, sweet Shannon goes well with spicy foods, Asian noodles, that sort of thing. Whereas the drier style, great for seafood shellfish. But, of course, if you're one of those people that, you know, you, you're just getting off Moscato... Uh, you like sweeter wines, you will like some of the Shenons that are sweeter. This is the 2017 Clos Le Vigno Vouvray 2017. I probably said that already. Alexandre Monmassou. Now, Vigno means wine grower or wine maker. And so, you see that on the label, you say, oh, what does that mean? That means the winemaker. And the winemaker is Alexander Mamasu. Hope I didn't butcher that one. Probably did. Let's give this a little rip. I think uh, Shannon Blanc is a really cool wine. It's a good way to expand your uh, palate horizon. It was really kind of cool to watch um, Viognier really start taking off. And uh, look at the color on this. Now this is a cool thing about uh, Shannon too is they can get really golden. And this is a very golden color. And I'm assuming that if it's, it's this gold, it might have a sweeter tone to it. Just saying. It's my guess. Let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, $34. So, not chump change. Uh, $34 bucks is a you know, pretty good chunk of money. But, you know, a lot of these uh, Vouvray's that are made, are, are the quality is there. And the cool thing about Vouvray is it is very age-worthy. So if you want to put a few whites in your cellar, these babies will age up to 10 years easily. Some of them don't even open up for the first five years. This is a 17, so it's already what, four, almost four years old. Not quite. Three and a half. <laughs> so 
that's the case with, and, and they will age a long time and as they age they get you know that nice they mellow out really nice they have good acidity and very good aromatics which are a good combination for aging wine let's see what we get on the nose so I get a little bit of that wooliness and this has that a fig component coming through I'm getting a little bit of uh, quince hints of apple there's that, just that nice little fig almost a walnut not walnut uh, more hazelnut I guess let's see what we get on the palate golden golden color hopefully you can see that you saw it you saw it really cool color so this is on the sweeter side and it doesn't have any indication on this wine that it'll be sweeter. But, that being said, it finishes drier. So you get this initial attack of sweet, almost like a, a fig. Uh, I get a little bit of a golden raisin, maybe. Not quite golden raisin. Definitely fig. Like blended fig and pear with just a splash of apple. Very smooth, very nice across the palate. If you like a little sweetness to your wine, this is really good. Well made, Vouvray. I can tell spicy on the backside, which is really cool. I like that. Get a little bit of spice action and a little bit of baking spice as well. Nice seamless flow across the palate. The acidity is nicely integrated in this wine. And the flavors just linger for a long time. It does finish on the drier side. So, once again, hopefully when you walk into a wine shop and you see this uh, uh, Alexandre Montmassou Vouvray, Vouvray um, you, he or she will know that it's on the sweeter side. Now, this would be awesome, awesome with a little spicy noodle dish. Really good. This would be good with tacos. This would be good with, um, I would have it, actually wouldn't, if you had a, like a Cajun dish, that would be really cool with this wine as well. Now, for those of you seeking a super dry wine to go with your shellfish, this is not the one. But for 32 bucks, Let's say 34, that could be on the high side. You could probably get it a little bit less in some places. Might be a little bit more. I just went to Wine Search and looked, and that was the average price for this Vouvray. Now, that being said, so let's say you decide, well, I might, I might want to see what happens. Maybe I can age this wine. So buy a couple bottles that you, you invested 68 bucks, less than 100 bucks. Tuck it in your cellar for five to eight years, and you will. this thing will get richer, deeper. All of those things will happen to it. So, yeah, it's kind of a fun experiment, really. Yeah, that fig component. Little peach. That's what I'm getting. Little peach action. Uh, peach, maybe a touch of mango there, but definitely that is there. And it dries off on the finish. Great wine. Great Vouvray. I'm going to just go straight up A. I think that's a fantastic example. Now, for, of course, if you don't like anything sweet, you're not going to like this wine. But let's say you're a, you've got out of Moscato, now you're trying other whites, and you're like going this way, and you're trying Viognier. Maybe you want to splash and just spoil yourself and spend just a few extra bucks and get yourself a really nice Vouvray. Right now, the next one, this is the Clos Cuvée Clos de Vaux. Clos de Vaux, Vaux, Clos de Vaux, excuse me. Vigneau Chevreau. So that's the winemaker. Vigneau Chevreau Vouvray 2018. A cool thing, like this has 13% alcohol. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to take too much time. This actually says demi sec. So if you're, it's a real busy label, as you can see, real, real busy label. But on the side there, it says demi sec which is an indication that it's sweet. So at least you know that, right? Or if it says Muelo, Muelo on it, 
you know it's going to be sweet. Actually, the, the, the wines of Moelu are high quality, one of the higher quality sweet wines of Vouvray. Okay. Let's see what we get on the nose. Excited. Now, interesting, this is not, not nearly as gold, of course it's one year younger, not nearly as gold as the other one. It's a little lighter. Almost a, there's just a gold tinge, but nah, not really. Yeah, interesting. Let's see what we get on the nose. Definitely quince. I'm getting a little bit of a, 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 a perfumed white flower. Now there's some interesting minerality, like dusty rock coming through on the nose. But predominantly quince is what I'm, I'm seeing in this. Maybe just a slight hit of fig on the back side. Let's see what we get on the palate. Yeah. Quite a bit sweeter than the first one. So this is a sweet Vouvray. It says it on the label, Demi Sec, which means sweet. This has like pears drenched in, I don't know, I, I, almost like a, not butterscotch, but that sweetness is a fig component coming through with the pear, quince pear. This is delicious. I mean, this is like, you know, it's like, you could almost drink this as an aperitif. I mean, really. I mean, it's sweet. But, like I said, this would go with spicy food really well. So if you're looking for something to match with a spicy dish, I'm losing it. I don't even, yeah, I showed you the label. This is $22. So this is down quite a bit than the other one. So $22, a little bit more reasonable. And I just see like a $22 Vouvray. You have a, a newbie wine drinker. Not newbie newbie, but you know, kind of a maybe even a little hipster wine drinker that you know wants to dive into something new, and they they prefer sweeter style wine. This would be perfect. This would be perfect. It's like dessert in the mouth. I mean, it, I'm just trying to think. Uh, creme brulee. That's what it reminds me a little bit. This would be really good with creme brulee, by the way. With cheesecake. This would be great. Awesome wine with that sort of thing. Nice balance. Good acidity underneath the sweetness. Again, a wine you could age. Uh, five years easily. Uh, kind of fun to do that. Uh, we talked. Uh, we did that episode a while back, if you want to check it out. Uh, not too long ago, I did a wine episode on, on cellaring wine. Got a lot of action on the comments on that. I really appreciated it. And um, this is a sellable. Vouvray is very sellable, age-worthy wine. And this is just an example of that. But if you just want to have a little dessert in your glass, this is fantastic. Yeah, like I said, creme brulee. Uh, quince, pear, but it finishes, you can get the acidity on the back side. Very cool wine, very nice Vouvray. I'm going to go straight up. I have two A1s right here, two A1s. Now, I always hard time with sweet wines because, you know, it's like they're sweet, they're good, you know. I have a sweet tooth, so, you know, sometimes I like to have a sweeter wine. But the cool thing about this is it has such good balance, seamless across the palate, just good complexity, and it finishes with that acidity that you can, you know, you can see it in there. You can, you, you know that it has some freshness underneath. That's really cool. So, two-way wines. This is a good episode. I like it when I hit two wines like that. Right off that. Boom! There you go. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I hope you're enjoying these programs. Sorry I missed last week. But I put episodes up on Mondays and Thursdays. So look for those episodes. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. And I did want to ask one quick question and see how many of you know the answer. Chenin Blanc, of course, made in Vouvray. Sauvignes is another area. I probably butchered that one. 
in France, in the Loire Valley. But it, there's another country that really does a lot of Chenin. In fact, they do more Chenin than Vouvray. Do you know what country produces more Chenin than Vouvray? Let me know in the comments. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.